guys, this is a special request for Mr. L. Heaney, um, suffering from sports dayitis uh, in recent days. But this is on the quantity theory of money, something which we did in class a few weeks ago, and there were a number of you missing, as is often the case at this time of the year, when we have a busy calendar of external guests, speakers, visits, sports occasions, and so on. And so this is for all of you people who are absent and to help you to catch up. So the quantity theory of money is a classical theory and put forward predominantly by our learned and esteemed uh, economist, Mr. Milton Friedman. And of course, you'll all be familiar with that very famous uh, Friedman quote, often one which is cited in A-level economics essays from one year to the next. And it's no bad thing to do, so ladies and gentlemen, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Now let's break that down. What does that mean in simple layman's terms? Well, it means that if a government or a monetary authority of the day attempts to stimulate aggregate demand, to stimulate employment and growth in the economy, ultimately, excuse me, Ultimately, in the long run, all that will happen is you will get an increase in the rate of inflation or the price level. And according to classical theory, at least, there will be no change, no change in the level of output. Because, of course, the level of real output stays at its natural rate of YN. Now, when you looked in your year one economic studies, you probably considered this diagram where we have the classical aggregate supply curve, perfectly inelastic, AD1 and AD2. And as you can see on this diagram, any attempt to increase the size of the economy, to increase the amount of real output, only results in an increase in the price level because we're simply moving from A to B and so we're jumping up from P1 to P2. Now, if, if you were to do that via an increase in the money supply in order to lower interest rates, to boost AD, etc., etc., then according to Milton Friedman and classical economists, this is what would happen. Now, my group, we've been also looking, ladies and gentlemen, I just threw this out there as a resource for you. Have a look at uh, the Masters of Money series by Stephanie Flanders. Uh, who used to write an economics uh, blog on the BBC website, it's called Stephanomics. Uh, she doesn't work for the BBC any longer, but a few years ago she did do a tremendous series called Masters of Money. Episode 1 is on John Maynard Keynes, episode 2 is on Friedrich von Hayek, which I'll talk about in a moment, and then episode 3 is on Karl Marx. Well worth a look. But Friedrich von Hayek, as you will know, I'm sure, an Austrian economist, born in Vienna, raised in Vienna, but he uh, is also a great contributor to this whole notion of too much money chasing too few goods leads to inflation, uh, and saw this with his very own eyes in Vienna after the First World War, when the, the central bank just printed money, millions and millions of notes, day after day after day. Indeed, the presses were running uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, and consequently inflation at the time rose to 10,000%. And the reason being was that there was simply too much money chasing too few goods. Inflation always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Try to stimulate AD, all that will happen is you get inflation. Now, we can formalize this more appropriately um, by using this quantity theory of money equation, QTM, where MV is equal to PT. So you'll probably have come across this before, MV equals PT, where M is the money supply, V is the velocity of circulation, P is the price level, and T, sometimes in some textbooks it's a Q, just depends which book you're looking at, so P is the price level, and T or Q is the number of transactions taking place. And so what do we mean by these things? So M, the money supply, it's fairly obvious. Ranges, of course, as you'll know, and you'll look at in your studies this year, ranges from M0 to M4, so we're talking about narrow money and broad money, but we'll look at that in another video. 
V, the velocity of circulation. So this is the number of times that money is changing hands and therefore it is indicative of the actual number of transactions which are taking place in an economy. So in a boom time, we would expect V to rise and in a recession, we would expect V to fall. P is obviously the price level, it's fairly obvious, and Q is the number of transactions. And again, this is linked into V because the faster V is uh, taking place, then of course, the more transactions you will have taking place in the economy. However, classical uh, economics and Friedman argues that V, this one, velocity of circulation, and T stroke Q, whichever book you're looking at, argues that those two things are constant. And why does he argue that those two things are constant? Well, based on empirical studies of historic data. Looking at historic data in booms and recessions of, uh, which had gone on uh, when uh, Friedman was doing the research into this, Friedman thought and discovered that actually V, although it might alter during a boom and a recession, it doesn't alter by enough doesn't alter significantly enough to affect the price level. And same goes for T or Q. Yes, it may change, but not by a significant amount, a significant enough amount to alter the price level. And so if you really want to zoom in here on P, we can rearrange this so that we get P is equal to MV over Q. P equals MV over T. But of course, if these two are assumed to be constant, then we can say that P is equal to M. Well, if that's the case, that would mean that if you double P, in order to keep one side of the equation the same as the other, you would also have to double M. And that, ladies and gentlemen, helps us to understand and to explain why, whenever there is an attempt, in classical theory at least, to stimulate AD by increasing the money supply, all that happens in the long run, and bear in mind it is in the long run, and of course we've talked in previous videos about the short run, long run trade-off, but in the long run, all we get is inflation. And of course, if you do have a look at this Hayek uh, video on YouTube, you will find that one of the things that is mentioned there with regard to Hayek, Hayek would argue that any attempts by the government to intervene often end in disaster. Now, in this instance, really what, what we're saying is that attempts by the government to intervene and to correct a, what Keynes would call a market failure in the form of unemployment uh, ultimately only ends in disaster in the sense that you get a higher rate of inflation. So that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Keynes, of course, would contradict this in a number of ways, a number of evaluative ways, because Keynes would say, well, this is a nonsense, of course, in a boom V changes and of course in a boom T changes and of course it's significant enough to impact on the price level. Um, but of course he would also argue, and this is Keynes, would also argue that markets are more prone to what are uh, known and referred to in Keynesian economics as animal spirits uh, and this sort of herding mentality and bubbles appearing in markets and so it is that behaviour whereby the behaviour of one person is followed by another, followed by another, followed by another, and it's that behaviour which tends to lead to uh, excessive price bubbles and so on. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we'll leave it at that for now, and that is the quantity theory of money, especially for Mr L Heaney. Bye for now.